here today contemplating going back in the world? No. After you have served God? No. After you come to God? No. After you're a child of God? No. After you're a Christian? Is anybody here? If you are, please don't leave here until we gather the elders yes. and lay hands on you and pray over you in the name of the Lord. Don't do it. Uh, no, I don't believe there is. I don't believe among the saved here today there's anybody that is wanting to go back to the world. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. I must go on. So you're sealed with this uh, anointing. And see, what does he seal you with? Well, look here. Go back to Ephesians 1. I'm going to move out of here shortly. Uh, but um, Ephesians 1, he said, Whom also after that you believe, verse 13, you were sealed with that holy, holy spirit of promise. What are you sealed with? My aunt would put that lid on and that little wax. I don't know what that was. Uh, that paraffin get around the cover and then put the lid on and it was hot and tight and it was sealed. Well, when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it was not a joke. It was not a fantasy. It was not something uh, that they gave me with some religious expression of some kind. I was sealed with the Holy Ghost. I was sealed Amen. with the Holy yes. Spirit of promise. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. I was sealed. Amen. You know why I can't go back in the world? Because I'm sealed. Amen. I can't serve the devil because I'm sealed. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You know why I'm not going to give up? Because I'm sealed. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm sealed. Yes, sir. What God gave me that day is still in me. Yes, sir. I'm 12 years old. That's 71 years ago. But 71 years, there's no car you can drive that will endure that long. No. There's no house you can live in no. and use it continuously that long. But Jesus put something in me called the Spirit of Promise, the Holy Ghost, and it's sealed there. Praise the Lord. And the enemy cannot come in, and it will not leave me because I'm sealed. Yes. I'm sealed. Amen. I'm sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. Doubters can come around me. Skeptics can come around me. I can have blue days, sad days, gloomy days. And I have that. And every Christian does. Don't tell me that you haven't been sad some days since you've been a child of God. Don't tell me you haven't been a gloomy uh, person some days. Some days God had to revert your mind, get your spirit, lift you up, give you a song, give you a praise, give you a scripture. Uh, no, but it doesn't overcome that that's, right. that's sealed in me. Amen. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that's in you. Amen. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Praise our God. Praise the Lord. The banks may fail. My home may get termites in it. My car may stop. And everything in life may come to a close. But what I have... Right. It's there, and the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. I said, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you feel the Spirit of God in this afternoon? You may be hurting. Some of you may be in pain, and you are. But do you feel the Spirit of the Lord touching you and helping you? I believe you do. I know you do. And then let's go back to Ephesians 4 real quickly. And um, I'll dwell on that for a moment. And, and then I'm, I'm not going to keep you beyond a certain amount of time. You know, I want you to have time for the 6 o'clock service. And uh, I want to obey the Lord with what he's giving me here. Uh, but he said to... Uh, he said in uh, Ephesians uh, 4, and, and let's pick up the 30th verse again, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you were sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, let all bitterness, and oh, I'm so glad to see and can feel that the church in Bradenton is getting rid of bitterness. And we need to get rid of bitterness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bitterness is a terrible cancer in your life. No matter what you're bitter about, it is not good for you. 
doesn't matter if you're bitter against somebody, if you're bitter over what they've done to you, or you think they've done to you, if you're bitter about an experience in marriage, if you're bitter about children, if you're bitter about a job, if you're bitter about God didn't give you that place he seemed to give them, if you're bitter about the fact that you don't seem to gather people around you as much as someone else might, if you're bitter about education they have that you don't have, if you're bitter about being intimidated when people are around you, uh, bitterness, if you uh, had a business deal, it went bad, sour, you lost money. I've lost enough money in my life to have a fortune laid out. Uh, I won't go through all the ways I've lost it, but uh, you know, some of it just giving it away to people. They just say, here, I want to help you. You can't be bitter you can't help someone and then be bitter about it. You can't say, I gave that and then be bitter about it. You can't do it. You'll lose your blessing. You'll, you'll lose what God wanted you to do. You can't be bitter about, well, they've got help and I don't. I, I, I look at some people around me and they're healthy. My goodness, I, I look at them and I think, my goodness, how healthy they are. Uh, I, I don't have quite have that. You can't be better, be better about age, because age is coming. Yeah, is. I don't get out of bed. I used to get out of bed and spring out. Yeah, now I get out of bed and lift <laughs> <laughs> oh, And my, my feet, that I, I walk like a duck when I get out of bed. <laughs> when I first get out of bed, I notice I, I walk like this. Yes. And I'm just going to say, where are you going? Well, praise God. Praise. You know, I don't walk like I used to. I don't spray out of things like I used to. But I can't be bitter about that. Because look how good God has been to me. So many years of my life. So many years I did spring out of there. So many years I have had help. So many years God's blessed me. You have to praise God yes. for everything because Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5 and, and uh, what is that verse there? It's around 19, 20, uh, chapter 18, 18. In everything, in everything, everybody say it with me, but in everything, but in everything you're hurting some of you, but God will bless you when you're saying this, but in everything, but in everything, Give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's give him a thanksgiving offering. Praise God, praise God. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. And I, I never will forget a lesson I had. Here's God. I had a Volkswagen bug, a little blue bug. Uh, I mean, the, not not the revamped Volkswagen now they have, <laughs> but the bug, the real bug. The real bug. And I, I drove it back and forth, and we lived over in Ellington by the river over there, and uh, we didn't live here at the church. And my daughter was growing up, she was about nine or ten years old, all of us, and she liked to come to Daddy over here to work and uh, do, how old was she? Fine, thank you, praise God. She remembers better than I. <clears throat> and, and she used to like to come over here and work with me and around the church and then we'd go home. That Volkswagen was giving me trouble. It was sputtering, smoking, jerking, and uh, you know, they got those sewing machine engines in the back of them. <laughs> I think they bought them from Sager Sewing Machine Company. You know, but uh, you know, they, they, they were sputtering and jerking and and, we, and traffic was back of me and people were honking horns and, you know, and I was trying to get that Volkswagen to go and it was going all the power it could go and it was smoking that it got me. The EPA would have rounded me up if they found me, you know. But uh, I said to Paula, Paula, this thing is going to die on us. She said, Daddy, over to the side, over to the side. Don't. It can't die in the middle of the road here. It can't die in the middle of the road. They'll run over us. So we got the car over. And, and I got out, and I, I was angry, 
I went over and I kicked the rear end of that thing. And I, and I said, you just will not do, will you? You won't do. And Paula said, Daddy, it can't tell you back anything. <laughs> All right, where are you kicking? It can't tell you to speak back to you. You can't do anything. And so finally, I said, Paula, I'm going to get rid of my anger. I'm going to get rid of my bitterness. I'm going to get rid of the feeling I have. She was like, I said, we're going to walk home. We, we were not too far from the house. We're going to walk home. I'll carry you when you get too tired. We're going to walk home. And I'm never coming back to this car. She said, Daddy, what will they do with it? I said, somebody will hold this car off. I am not coming back to it. I am done with it. I don't want to see this car ever again. It's over with me. You know, sometimes, if you've got bitterness, and I'm usually as an illustration, yeah. you better walk away from a situation. Yeah. 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 Rather than keep on trying to drive it, and it won't drive, yeah. and you can't park it in your auto, in your, uh, in your place anymore, you better walk away from it. Yeah. It's better to walk away yeah. and live to fight again another day. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. And yeah. just to stay there yeah. and get bitter about it, but stay yeah. sweet in your soul. And walk away from it. Don't let it become a root. Yes. Amen. Don't let it become a root of bitterness. That's right. Set a root of bitterness. We did that. We walked up. I have never seen that car. It was gone the next day. From that day to this, I have never seen it. I don't know what happened to it. I just know I was done with a bug. Praise God. We need to get rid of some bugs in the church. I said, we need to get rid of some bugs in the church. What's bugging you? What's bugging you anyway? Praise the name of the Lord. Get rid of the bug. Yes. Get rid of it. Yes. Because the church in Bradenton has a great work to do, as Brother Han said here. And we're not preaching division in this church. We love the people of God. We love the family of God. We're, we're, going, we're not going to pull Father apart from the rest of God's people. We're going to try to come closer together Amen. to the body of Christ, to the family of God, to the people of God. Amen. We have nothing in our spirit here against any of God's people. Amen. We belong to the rest yes. of God's people. Yes, we do. Praise the name of the Lord. No walls. Amen. No walls. Did you hear what I said? No we have no walls up here. Amen. We are going to be part of that one body. Yes. And that one God and Father who is above all and in you all and through you all. We are going in this assembly to be as sweet as any assembly could ever be. We're going to try to not grieve the Holy Spirit. We're going to forgive one another. We're going to pray. We're going to ask God to use us and use our talents and use our ability to form prayer teams uh, that will go throughout this Tampa Bay area and pray. Uh, where's Lori? I was talking to Lori. Where is she? Way in the back back there. When we were working at the church, here's what God is doing yesterday here at the church. Here comes Sister Lori in, driving all the way from Gibson. And a doctor has pronounced uh, that they can't do any more for her. But God can. Yeah. But God is. Yeah. But God will. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. And since, since the insurance company turned her down, that she could not get any more insurance coverage, listen to this, you don't think miracles are happening? Since we prayed, and I made it known to this church that her insurance had been dropped, the insurance company has now informed her that her insurance is back in coverage. Woo! Hey, praise the name of the Lord. Hey, we better praise God for what he's doing. the Holy Ghost 50 years, 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, 10 years, you've come through a long, dark night of the church. Yes. A long, dark night of yes. the church. It has been dark. Yes. The church has wobbled and weaved yes. and has gotten things on it and in it. But we're coming out of the wilderness oh, of leaning you. on his arm. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I 
feel it today. Yes. I feel the tramp, tramp, tramp of the army of the Lord. Yes. I feel victory. Praise our God. Hallelujah. We have been through a long, dark night. Yes. But God will help us. You will be healed of that disease. You will not live with that till you die. God will relieve you of that. God will help you. You will not die in poverty if we'll do the right thing about the rest of the body of Christ. And if we'll not have an angry, hostile, bitter spirit. Amen. Turn the cheek the other way. Praise God. And let God help you uh, with it. Because look, the scripture said, uh, and I, 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 won't, I don't want to leave this till uh, you get everything I can wring out of it. And I could be talking, I'm aware I could be talking on uh, the seals and the thunders and the seven thunders and, and, the, and the seven seals. But the seven seals and the seven thunders will not help you right now. You need a practical gospel. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Your mind Come on. And turn it from bitterness uh, yeah. and anger. We need a healing yeah. in the body of Christ uh, yes. of yeah. our minds uh, and our spirits. Yeah. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Some of you need to yield to God and let the Holy Ghost help you. I need to do that. We need to do that. I can talk on those mysteries. I could talk on that, but in the few minutes I have, this is practical gospel. And this is more important for right now. Because you can understand, or think you understand, all about the seals till another revelator comes along. You know, you'll have it all straightened out. I've got seven thunders name to know who they are. I know the seals, I know the time dispensation. Yes. And somebody else come along, you get another time dispensation, another revelation on it, and you're wondering if you knew anything at all about it. But listen. You've got your spirit right with God. And don't have a, a spirit to grieve or to be bitter or to be hostile and love God and love the church. And look look at this crowd on Sunday afternoon. Yes. Meeting in a church dining room. Praise our God. And driving from Port Charlotte and, and uh, over in Tampa. And uh, I started to tell about glory and two or three things intersecting. I'll clarify it here. Uh, Lori came here yesterday, and we were working in the church, and she said, I, uh, I thought today was the day of the meeting of the sisters uh, for the uh, waitresses and the servers. She said, I've come to be a part of that. Praise now, here's a person that the doctor said your life is through. There must be something in her mind. Yes. I believe there's something in this mind. Yes. Listen, this woman is not thinking about dying. No. Hear me. She isn't thinking about dying. No. She's thinking about living. Come on, girl. You better stop that thinking about dying and start living because this is the greatest day of the church since Calvary. the Palmetto. It's down in the Port Charlotte. It, it's, uh, it's over into Seabring. And we were over there today encouraging the saints there. And, and there'll be another mission open uh, before the year is out because the vine is spreading. And, and then we have the Haitian saints uh, wanting to come together. And then we are not, we're wanting fellowship with all the brethren in the state of Florida, out of the state of Florida. We don't want to separate ourselves. No. We don't want to be a people over here by ourselves. No. We want to be people that love God yes. and love the rest of the family of God yes. and love the truth. Yes. Praise God. Praise We've come from a long, dark night. <laughs> and if that woman can press her way through the crowd yes. and touch the hem of his garment, yes. I think I can press my way through whatever I've got to and touch it the hem of his garment, and touch the hem of his garment. Praise the name of the Lord. I had to press, Brother Marlon, you had to press your way through some things. Oh, child, you don't know. I've had to get through, over, done, said, Amen. praise God. How many in here have had to press your way? Amen. Well, you're, 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 in, you're in the scriptures. The law and the yes. prophets were until John. The law and the prophets were until John. And since that time, the yes. kingdom of heaven is preached, and every man presses his way into it. It is a pressing way. Yes. But there's victory in it. All right. I don't think I've wrung everything. Let me read it a little more. 
Amen. Amen. Just read a little more. Amen. Read on. Let all bitterness and wrath, verse 31, Ephesians 4, and anger and clamor and, 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 and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind. And be you kind. Yes. Uh, tell him. Uh, I'm going to quote to you and you quote to him. Everybody quote to your neighbor. And be you kind. And be you kind. Be you kind. Be you kind. Because if you're kind one to another, you're God's kind. Yes. If you're kind to one another, you're God's kind. Yes. And be you kind one to another. One to another. One. Tender hearted. Forgiving. Don't you love a person that can just break up crying? Yes. 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 I, I've met two kinds of people in my life, and you have too. I've met a person that you could just say a few words to, and they would just start crying. They'd just be broken up. Then I met people you could say 10,000 words to, and their face would be a stoic. You'd think you were looking at Mount Rushmore. Their face would never crack a smile. They'd never shed a tear. You know, but it's God in you that breaks your face up. It's God in you that makes you kind. It's God in you that makes you tender. It's God in you. The other day I was at Brother Abimelech's house here, um, and he's been going through this leg healing, and um, he didn't know it, but I was I just saw him, and I saw he was wanting to get around on that thing he uh, put his knee on, and then I saw him coming to church and playing the trumpet. And I'll be I'll be glad to see the band get back together again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get back in the sanctuary, and uh, I, I started crying, and tears come out of my eyes. And nobody had an onion nearby me, praise God. And I wasn't crying like the Hollywood actresses do. Uh, you know, they keep onions in Hollywood to make them cry uh, and weep. Uh, but uh, I, 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 didn't, I wasn't doing that. I was crying because my brother was suffering. You can't look at your sister or your brother and not feel a compassion. That's what led me to this people. That's what brought me to the church. I was in a hard world. I was in a hard place, but I came to a tender place. I came to a place where people could say, I love you, forgive me, help me. And they were good about that. And it, and it helped me be put away from you with all malice and be a kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Why would you forgive anybody? Because God forgave you. Yes. Why would you forgive another? Because God forgave you. Uh, through Christ, he forgave you. And um, finally here, uh, in this uh, closing moment, I don't, know, I don't think I'll do that. I, I, I think, um, I know I'm, I'm enough of the word for now. That's sealed in your heart. And uh, you can undo sometimes what you do uh, by going beyond where you should go. Everybody got a bulletin? Did everybody get a bulletin? All right, read it carefully. And remember, we have the general convention meeting tomorrow night here in the dining room. Uh, the last meeting before our convention. And you come, and you say, Brother Marla, I can't do anything in the convention. Why would I be here? Yes, somebody among all the church can do something. There's a place for many of you to fill, and you come and find out about it. If you're a singer, be here. If you're a, if you're a band player, be here. If you're if you're a prayer warrior, be here. If you're a, a, a an usher, be here. An usherette, be here. Uh, because um, after this meeting tomorrow night, then the team leaders are going to be calling meetings, and there should be everybody present. If you're an usher, and there's an usher's meeting called, you be there. At that meeting, if you possibly can. If you're a band member, be there. If you're a, a choir, praise team, be there. Because we haven't got a lot of time to get ready for this meeting. Oh. It's right here at us. Amen. It's right here on us. Um, Sister Barlow, would you help me sing a closing song? <coughs> I know. Were you going to sing a closing no, song? No, sir. Were you going to sing a closing song? No, sir, I wasn't. You must have just made us. <laughs> praise our <laughs> God. <laughs>
you, you feel like this, I mean, you think we can do this? Praise God. Amen. Uh, I'm going to say where no one stands alone. See that? Praise God. Amen. This song is dedicated to all of you. We're going to sing it in a few minutes, and we're going to let you be at home or... And by the way, if some are here and they have no place to eat between services, um, we we are we can move this quickly, and tables can be set up here for you that generally stay over. There's usually eight or ten, and there there'll be food for you if you if you're among that eight or ten that stay between services. In a few minutes, just give us time to transform it, and you'll you'll have a place. Praise God. Do they have it set up in the back? They have it set up in the back? Is that right? Yes. yes sir. All right. And they have, they have it set up in the back. Thank you for thinking about that. You're a thoughtful church to think about that. And, uh, and I want to know. I'm glad to see everybody here, all the dear children of God, and Sister Sandy and Brother Jerry. I'm glad to see you. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. God and they love his word and many many years in fact we opened the Port Charlotte mission uh, in their daughter's uh, business place that's where the church started there praise God amen amen all right this song was written by Stuart Hamlin I'm the one that keeps his music alive by the way and I don't hear that song but I keep his music alive praise our God amen sing that second verse the last time. I was listening to President Donald Trump speak the other day at the National Prayer Breakfast. And whether you're for that individual in politics or not, 
I'm not in politics. I'm speaking about something he said. He said, I company with people of wealth. I have wealth. Have more money than I know I'll ever spend. The cabinet appointments are millionaires. He said, I, 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 I'm with rich people every day of my life. They surround me. I've been with rich people, ultra rich people, mega rich people. This is the president speaking. All of my life. Since I was a young man, I inherited riches. But he said, I can tell you this. Most all of us with immense wealth are as miserable as we can be. That statement struck me so hard, so forcefully, with all the world at their disposal. But I'm richer, and you're richer. I said I'm richer, and you're richer. That's from the President of the United States, who made that statement. Most of them I know are as miserable they can be. Oh, you got something today? Yes. I don't care what you're struggling with. Let your praise be greater. Yes. Let your triumph be greater. Yes. Because at your worst state, yes. you've got Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. All right. I don't know if I get the key back or not. Turn to one another and greet each other right now in the love of God. 